I, so, I'm, I'm like, I look like the great pumpkin now. <laughs> with, with a nice goatee going on. Exactly. It's just orange in front of me. So I'm pretty looking forward to tonight at Dave and Buster's, uh, 7.30. We're starting out. Tell me a little bit about what's going on. Well, that's the Cross Reality Crypto Club. Um, let me see if I can actually bring up their uh, purpose of that club. I've, I've got uh, that here to um, one second here. There we go. Bring that up and I'll share it with you all. So share screen as we fumble around here. So um, it's all about the combined ecosystem or this merger of ecosystems that are happening or technologies. It's uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, simulators, internet of things, uh, consumer games, out of home entertainment and blockchain and cryptocurrency. If you work in any one of those industries, you see this overlap that has been evolving or, you know, this merger of all of that coming together into what we'd like to uh, say will end up being very similar to the Oasis out of Ready Player One. Um, it's things that our team has been contemplating, working towards in one way, shape, or form or another since uh, uh, the early 90s, actually. So, you know, we see it really, you know, about to uh, uh, launch and we're, this club is all about uh, any one of those. If you have an interest in any one of those technologies, or several of them come out, hang out with like-minded people and uh, play some video games at Dave and Buster's eat and we'll have a good meeting. Yeah. Isn't it like $20 all you can eat wings and games. And then we get to learn about the future of, of our ecosystem. The, the <laughs> club, the cross crypto crypto club doesn't charge anything. If you want a good deal at Dave and Buster's tonight, it is a $20 all you can eat wings and all you can play video games. So that's a really great deal. But the club is free. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I'm going to bring my granddaughter. She's going to play games. I'm going to learn more about cryptocurrency. Real quick, can you give a recap? You just held like this incredible conference derby week. It was called Run for the Unicorns. It looks like it was your second annual conference. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, let me share another screen. Let me prep that other screen. I wish I'd known we were asking about all of this up front. So, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. That's run, run for the unicorns. And it'll take a second to get up here. Then I'll share my screen on that. Um, I like pictures. Pictures speak a thousand words. And I can almost keep up with a picture. But, you know, I'm not quite that fast in talking. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, this was uh, the rundown. We did a hackathon over the weekend at, uh, that was at the um, uh, University of Louisville Speed Scientific School, what they call the Engineering Garage. So we held that there. Then we had Shark Tank come in. If everybody remembers Shark Tank coming to town, we were the host of them. We're the ones that invited them. We're the ones that got them here um, and uh, even brought them to the VIP dinner at night. So we had Shark Tank, people people started lining up Sunday at 7 p.m. for that. Wow. And there was like, I mean, they just wrapped this whole parking lot out there by uh, the university club uh, with people um, all night. They set up a tent. There was a DJ out there. It was a pretty fun event. <laughs> just hanging out in the crowd waiting to get in for, for, for uh, to get your band for Shark Tank. Um, then we, uh, we do... On Tuesday, um, there was Bourbon with Billionaires, and Wednesday and Thursday was the conference that was in the brand new um, University of Louisville's uh, conference center, which was really awesome. At the Student Activity Center, they, they put on this $48 million uh, addition, and we got to use it as a conference center. Then Friday, we all, you know, all the VIPs and anybody else that wanted to come along went to the Kentucky Oaks. Anybody that was part of Run for the Unicorns, we went to the Kentucky Oaks together. Friday night, we had the Unicorn Ball, which you weren't singing there, so I was depressed. <laughs> Maybe next year. There's always next year, right? And then uh, Saturday, we did the, uh, the Kentucky Derby. So that was really a blast. You've got some really smart friends. I met a lot of them last year, and I really um, 
man, I wish I could have been there this year. But you guys are getting together tonight. I know that there's several of you that have been kind of um, forerunners in this whole blockchain cryptocurrency movement. So I'm really looking forward to, to networking with you guys and learning. Um, I don't know what the exact topic is, but I'm really excited to see what we got. Well, um, tonight I think we're going to be doing a lot of uh, uh, play testing. Of, so bring your laptop if you want to. Play, play testing. I call, you call it play testing, but um, uh, QA testing, if you will, of our player acquisition engine. And if you've got an Android phone, bring it out. Um, this is the only group that's got uh, private access to our app online right now uh, or in the Google store. Um, so we're testing it out, trading uh, blockchain video game assets back and forth um, from multiple different uh, blockchains, which is pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, you keep focusing and I'm going to push back on you. You keep focusing on uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. Okay. So uh, my, my pushback is, that's only one part. It's one of the ho hotter parts. But if you look at, uh, you know, the whole combined ecosystem, it's augmented reality, virtual reality, I mean, augmented reality, like Pokemon Go. Did you play Pokemon Go? Did you run over anybody that was playing Pokemon Go? I didn't, but I, I ran into people that were doing it. I'm familiar with it. <laughs> I've run into them while they're walking down the street and they're like, boom, you know, it's like, I'm not a Pokemon. Sorry. I've also played it. I, I was one of the 800, 800 million people that downloaded it and played it. Right. Um, so that's cool. Uh, virtual reality, uh, simulators, I, uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, consumer games, uh, out-of-home entertainment. Did you see or read the book Ready Player One or did you see it? No. Really? No. See, that's the thing. Is so so what, where, where I'm coming from is that I've had, well, anyway, I just recognize that a lot of my very professional friends, they're all gamers like, like you. And they spend a lot of money playing games and they, they exchange these tokens. I'm very familiar with that. But for the most part, you know, I'm a technology girl. I've, I've been seeing cryptocurrency and blockchain, you know, as a, few, as a part of the future for the last eight to 10 years. I've been one of those sad people, though, that didn't invest in it early, although I saw it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I was introduced to it uh, way back like 2010, 2011. Uh, didn't invest in it. Didn't didn't. Uh, incorporate it, but I, I took a good look at the technology, and then when we decided to reimagine the whole video game industry, which is a very, very large industry, I mean, let's look at it, it's a $138 billion industry that's growing 10% year over year, but yet it's a freemium model. The games, for the most part, are free. How do you make $138 billion in revenue off of a free game? It's called downloadable content or these video game assets that they're, they're selling. And these video game assets, which is, I'd say, over 75% of the market right now, is tr the ones that are tradable player to player. And that's a huge secondary industry. It's like Magic the Gathering cards. When you buy a pack for $3, you open that pack. One of those cards instantaneously could be worth to another player 60 bucks. Right. So you open the $3 pack. You've got the current hot card. Another player will give you 60 bucks. So there's a secondary economy um, that's pretty much in video games been an underground economy. That's hundreds of billions of dollars trading hands player to player in these video games. Right. But as we all know, you know, life happens. Every once in a while, you, you have to come up with some cash quick. Um, and if the majority of your wealth is inside of a video game, you want to take some of that that you can probably do without and, and uh, liquidate it for those, for those uh, unseen expenses that pop up out of nowhere. You know, I, you know, like the rent. I mean, who knew that was every month, right? power of this system is so what i see is our ability to utilize gaming because i'm working on gaming to gamify hiring right because we've got to we've got to learn that we can find these kids that have all these talents and gamification is is easily becoming a way to recognize talent to hone talent and then also develop and train it in a corporate environment so i see all of these worlds coming together 
Oh, yeah. exactly, exactly. I mean, gamification is talking about taking business practices out of a different world and using game mechanics and game theory to have people get rewarded for doing the the um, uh, the things that benefit that business. Right. Um, but where we come from in games, you don't have to gamify it. It already is a game. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I know. <laughs> but you're right. That just shows what my point was. That shows this overlap merger of all of these different technologies coming together. Absolutely. Um, it's like augmented reality and virtual reality. People believe that the video game side of that is just humbug. I've heard people say that word to me before, believe it or not. So <laughs> about this, that's humbug. However, they'll sit there and throw millions and millions, hundreds of millions, billions. Some of these big VC firms are, have got billion dollar um, funds to invest in augmented reality or virtual reality um, applications for medical or applications for training or applications for industrial. And the thing that they don't really comprehend is every one of those experiences that they come up with for medical and, and industrial and that, those are made off of video game engines. So it shows you that this gamification, this uh, technology, games themselves have a phenomenal amount of uses in regular everyday life. And if you read the book Ready Player One, which I'll suggest you should, um, this oasis where everybody lives, works, learns, and plays, and only you know unplugs to go to the bathroom, to eat, or to sleep. Be, you know that's the world that they're they're saying this utopia world. I know that back in two thousand uh, and four, two thousand and five, people that did exactly that with World of Warcraft. And before that, EverQuest. I mean, they were in it 24-7. It was their life. Right. And, they, and uh, Ernest Klein captures, I mean, one of the best terms that he's, or one of the best sayings he has in there is people go to this, this thing. They, they, they originally start working in it for what they can do. They end up staying for what they can be. Okay. It's <laughs> very interesting because it's, it's, yeah, I've done this stuff. I've been in virtual reality since 1988. I created the first U S manufacturer virtual reality arcade system in 92. So I know what he's talking about there. <laughs> well, I know we do. And so that's why I'm, I'm just excited to, to be in a, a room with a lot of uh, people that know more things than me. Well, um, we, we've got a little bit different structure tonight. Uh, there was an overlap in there. So we're going to hang, we've got, we've got an area that they're going to put us in from 7.30 to 8.30 for us to like meet up initially and eat and drink and all that stuff and then go play games. And then after 8.30, then we get the private conference room, which they have, which is a beautiful, uh, beautiful place. Um, really good for business meetings because once you shut that door, that's all you hear is what's in there. And you've got some really good uh, AV equipment and that state of the art brand new facility. David Buster's in the mall in St. Matthews. Dave and Buster's in the mall in St. Matthews has one of the best conference rooms for business meetings that I've seen in Louisville. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> good to know. Very, very and, good. I mean, and that's totally separate from the fact they also have video games outside that room. Right. Uh, once you get in that room, I've been to several uh, meetups, several different um, business gatherings and that in there. You would never know there's a video game uh, room outside. They've got really a really awesome menu for uh, uh, some gourmet stuff or some really good chefs that make can make you some really good stuff there. So it's a different atmosphere than I understood Dave and Buster's was. I'd always gone there for the video games. But once once you go into the conference room and that, it's a really, really interesting place. So. Interesting. And, and I will, uh, I'll look forward. I'll give a, a report sometime tomorrow and check all this out, but thank you so much for spending some time with me explaining to some of my friends what this is all about. And, um, maybe we can get some, some new faces. Um, that sounds awesome. I don't see, unfortunately, let me get uh, this part up here. Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, excellent. Well, hopefully I'll see you out uh, tonight and, um, you have a great day.
Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Take care.